God has a greater purpose in saving us. God has a greater purpose in saving us. We're on our 40-day journey up until Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to get it every day. We're going in. Come get power with us today through power, through intentional prayer, fasting, and believing. Let's get started with this. 2 Timothy, the first through the ninth chapter, first chapter, ninth verse. It reads, he has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything, not because anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace, not because of anything that we have done. Man, you are great. You are, you are a great, you're a good person. You're awesome. Uh, most of us, for some people, you're a little decrepit, but that's okay though. But it doesn't even matter because God has already put into you, when you serve him, he's already put a, a purpose into you, his purpose, his purpose. So regardless of what you're going through, you haven't done anything to earn it. You haven't done anything to, to deserve it. You haven't done anything. You can't work your way into this righteousness. You can't. God has given it to us through his grace and mercy, through the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus. We now can live with grace and mercy, which means we can have some times when we fall on the wayside. We can have some times when we don't even get it right. We can have some times when we are living our worst life because we choose to live our worst life because life is about choosing. Huh? We have choice to sin. We have choice to chase after it with the, you know, what we like. We got, we got choices out here, but God understands that in this state we're in, this physical state we're in, being spiritual beings in the spiritual state that we're in, that we will make some bad decisions, some bad choices. And God is not going to hold that against you if you ask for you repent and ask for forgiveness of your sins. He doesn't hold that against you. The purpose that he has for you doesn't change. And, and you know, between the, the, the Cat Williams interview and the and the challenges of our of one of the generals in our faith, there is all these challenges and people become judgmental about other people. But one thing we do know is this, we're not in a position to judge, we're not in a position to speak against anybody. You can have your own perspective, but it's not for you to gossip, because God doesn't appreciate gossip. You know, God doesn't, God doesn't like a snitch. <laughs> but, but what God does appreciate is truth. And we may not get to the truth in these situations, but whatever is going through, what we do know is this, those, those who've done or gone astray, those who may have fallen uh, guilty, of not living their best life, God still has a plan for their life. And there can be, they can move right back in line with what God has for them, regardless of their situation, regardless of your situation, God will still show his grace and his mercy because he has a purpose. When you become a believer, he establishes this purpose for you in your life. You have a purpose. What's your purpose? What are you destined to do to accomplish for God? What, I have a friend, I have a friend who, a good friend of mine, a good friend of mine, and he struggles. He struggles with understanding his alignment, his purpose. He thought it was alignment was in his family. He thought that was what he was supposed to do. He 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 thought that raising, adopting a, a, a girl, a child, a female child, a girl child, he thought that adopting his da daughter, his stepdaughter was the thing that he was supposed to do. He he thought that he him moving to a city to strengthen his career, to build his career was the thing that he was supposed to do. He he thought that he was establishing himself in alignment with God, but all of a sudden his marriage faltered, his uh he gave he reversed the adoption, he he has a great job, but now he has new debt because he has the alimony responsibilities and he's paying for another household, although he has a grand house, beautiful house. And he's now going to have to sell, sell to split with his estranged wife. And he is in a bad way, but he remains encouraged because he understands he did everything he was supposed to do. He aligned himself by faith with God had purpose in his life. He was a good man. He, he adopted, he married, he provided. He did all that he was supposed to do. So when he walks away from the situation, which is a harmful, difficult, challenging situation, he walks away from the situation, he's not in a position to hold his head high 
because he still believes. He still believes that God, through all this difficult season in his life, that this season will surely pass. And I'm with him. I believe him. I believe God for him. So no matter what you're going through, just continue to believe and trust God. Because times can be harder than what they are right now. And it could be hard. It could be difficult. But I'm telling you, regardless of what you're going through, God has already established a purpose for you through his grace. The word says he has saved us and called us to a holy life because of it, not because of anything that we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace, because of God's purpose and grace, what you're going through, align yourself with what God has for you and trust and believe God's purpose and grace will continue to follow you all the days of your life. Ha! Ah, what would you do if you knew you weren't going to lose? Go after it. This life is one that you will not lose. Don't be fearful. Don't be hes- don't hesitate. Go out today and win for God. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father God, we thank you and honor you today, Father, for your purpose and grace that aligns with us today, Father. As we come boldly but humbly for the throne of grace, we stand in on business today and we come with the strength and understanding that we don't fear, we don't falter, that we're courageous, and we believe. We thank you for your love and establishing your kingdom in our lives here on earth as one day shall be in heaven. So, Father, now, forgive us of our shortcomings, our frailties, and our sins. We remain faithful to you, God, because you've been faithful to us, because we didn't do anything to earn it, dear God. We are humbled by your grace. We're humbled by your power. We're humbled by your authority. So take this life of ours as a seed, God, and grow this mighty oak called life so we may bear fruit, dear Lord, that others will see and be replenished because you blessed us. We thank you now for these things and we ask them in the great name of Jesus we pray. We all said, amen, amen. Hey, I challenge you today, and I'm going to challenge you today to go out and bless somebody, anybody, anybody with the gift financial, a cup of coffee, a, a meal. Just bless somebody today and, and, and explain to them how you survived in 2024 and thriving in spite of it. Amen? I love you. Remember this. There's nothing you can do about it. My love is true because God loves me. Therefore, I love you. Peace.